Well, that's never a good sign, is it? A full moon in the morning, which is no surprise. But all that sparkly stuff, that's our sparkly lights. That's the sparkly frost on the van. Well, I've drawn out number 17, which means I'm the 17th pick out of the 18 anglers. So 16 good pegs would have already gone by the time I've chosen my peg. But I've gone on Crescent today, which is a lake I've never fished a match on before. But I really fancy it. Being one of the smaller lakes on the complex, the fish can't back off. But luckily, 17 was one of the three bonus pegs. So there's an extra £100 at stake if I can win off my draw today. The ground bait is crushed expander and a bit of Thatcher's Green and then I mix it up to a slot and then I just push it through a little it'll come out beautiful and fluffy once I've done and bit, mix it to a porridge then it sets and then a beautiful damp fluffy mix fluff it all up already passed the whole lot for a pinky riddle before mixing so there's no big part of course and there you are absolutely fluffy but damp ground bait like I say mostly crushed expander but I put a bit of thatches in sometimes do sometimes don't so it's quite a light mix still but I think that's good for quality fish right. I think that's it no one shouted but it's it's, uh, it's way past the time, so uh, we're going to start. I have chosen peg six on present, <laughs> and it's a section of death. It's only a tiny little lake, there's only eight pegs on the lake, nine, ten pegs on the lake tops. And uh, there's myself, Ben Lockwood and Phil Cannon all chose to go on this lake. So uh, I'm going to feed. A little bit of ground bait, just a little bit, a little bit loose, and some maggots, quite a lot of maggots on the short line, because I know this lake's full of silvers, and it's nice skimming, I'll pop that in, top kitten three, out the way, just out the way there, just leave that alone, and keep feeding it, and then, what I'm hoping to catch on, find the rig, is this the bread rig. Actually, let's just shorten it a little bit. It's a nice long rig, but I need to shorten it just a touch. About six inch, eight inch. I'll just shorten that rig quick. Pop it back on there. I'm fishing eight to ten slick. 016, sorry, 018 mainline. Um, 012 to a 16 to begin with. There's some big, big carp in this lake. Really big. I've not shot this rig up yet. Um, I've not um, checked the shotting on this rig yet. It's a bit of a scramble this morning. So I've just got two number 12s. Another float. It's, uh, I'm just going to dob around towards a lovely looking tree opposite. Away from it to begin with. Ain't no punch. I'm pretty sure myself, Ben, and Phil will all be doing this to begin with. Just tighten this up a touch. New elastic I'll put in. Right, it needs tightening up a bit. So, right. Let's make it a bit pingier anyway. 8 to 10 slick. I mean, two miles road to fish 10 to 12 over there. With big F1s and cars at a target. But there's loads of roach in here as well. Have a bit of a dab around this tree. I've loosely plumbed up. It's three and a half foot tight to that tree. And then it'll just go up and up and up to about two foot tight across. So just in front of this tree is where I'm hoping 
a few F1s might be ganged up and an odd big car. It's good because Phil Cannon's on the end peg to my left. He's had a um, 90 pound off it last week on the Rover. And then Ben, ben Lock was chosen peg one in the corner there. Another really good peg. All the locals here love peg one on here. And I've chosen the peg in between the two. Which is good because I think we'll hopefully keep the fish moving. If I just sat here by myself, they'd probably bugger up up that end or up that end. But with three of us on the lake, it's actually better. We'll see what we can catch. Just dobbing bread. I'll probably dob bread for the first hour. Now, um, let's just flick it in again. I've got a maggot short swim, top kitten three. And then I've plumbed up in front of me, away from this tree, in the deepest water. It's about four or five foot and I'm going to fish pellets there because there's so many roach and skimmers in here I'm trying to be a bit more selective I know there's some little stockies in here uh, but there's some real nice big F1s there's car up to over double figures in this little lake and they're all stunning fish so we'll see see what we can catch Phil's got one on already oh dear well, hopefully, if he catches one or two, they'll scare up towards me. He's got a load of pollen there. Now, that's the only peg I've fished on this lake before. And this peg is probably 18 inches deeper and more into the main bowl of the lake. So I quite fancy it, really. Just try and find where the carp are sat. Hopefully, there's a few under that tree. So, but you'll see a lot of roach topping, it's full of roach, so if it is hard, the reason I've chosen this on a rover, it's like going to be like 2-3 degrees today, it was like minus 1, minus 2 all night, if it is rock hard, you could probably catch a good 20 pound of silvers without trying, well, okay, you'll have to try a bit, that looks like a big angry carp he's got there, if I do start to just catch carp, then I'll put the 10 to 12 slick on. But if it's more F1s, then 8 to 10 is perfect for them. So just dobbing it around lightly looking areas. I'm probably going to deepen off in a sec as well. Just go a touch deeper. I don't want to foul up anything. I've not had any little tap tap taps of uh, roach or anything, which is a good sign. Because this lake's full of them. I feel still playing that fish, so it's probably six to eight pound because there's some real monsters in this lake and they're all well the whole venue is full of good looking fish that's why it's so it's such a pleasure to fish it's quite a clear venue and the fish just look lovely hopefully we'll see a few today so nothing on that I'm going to deepen off this Ben's got one as well <laughs> A few inches deeper, bread still looks alright. So we'll leave it on, it'll be nice and soft. And that's the corner peg bends on, dobbing up the edge. There's a load of tools there. I'm not going to go right across just yet. Already I'm thinking maybe the 10 to 12 slick might be a better option. But I've got all this sort of this narrow neck to search. Surely there's got to be some fish under this tree. But they could be all down to my right. It could be anywhere. It could be in the middle. I just don't know. So what way he's dobbing, whether he's towards me or towards the tree. I'm trying to see how deep Ben's mugging as well. About two foot. Now I saw a guy on this peg a few days ago and he had an eight pound fish and a couple of three pounders doing this, about this range. So they are here, but if he does catch one or two, hopefully they'll they'll swim out and have enough and uh, come towards me. <laughs> but I'm just going to keep feeding pellets on that sh um, maggots on that short line, and uh, I'm not going to bother feeding pellets or anything or anything yet until I know what's what. I could easily swap this to a maggot or a pellet swim. I'm a little bit surprised it's not gone under, but we'll work a bit nearer to that tree. Probably about a metre short of it at the moment. It could be a metre away from the fish, you just don't know. They're going to be tightly balled today, with it being so cold. 
it's not going to get above two or three degrees really really cold night it bends right tight up the bank there so but i've got the beauty of going 16 even 17 meters tight across or more but uh we've got five hours to do that let's try and catch the easier fish first <laughs> Flick it out and just let it arc down nicely, keeping the pole tip away from the float. Got a nice long line above the float. Not silly long, but long enough to keep everything away and give me a bit of control. Flat calm, not a breath of wind today. A rolling fish would be nice. <laughs> not sure we'll see one of those today. I've just put the 16 metre section on. Not quite at the full 16. Just tucked it under in that little gap. It's a lovely big tree, there's got to be some carp under it. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to shallow up again next truck, truck. As I'm going further across, it does get shallow, so I'm going to bring it back down. I was probably, I'm about two and a half foot at the moment, I'm going to drop it back up to two foot. And whenever I get a chance, I'm just going to keep feeding a little bit of bait on that short line. I'm sure it'll be full of roach and little skimmers, but I'm sure if we keep persevering, we'll draw some big F1s in as well, I'm, I'm hoping. What I like to do is compress it before I punch it. I right, squeeze that bottom half so it's more of a fluttering disc. I've got two rigs for this. One on a short line, one on a long line. The shorter line obviously is the one I can tuck in amongst the branches and that if I have to. I'm starting more in open water at the moment with the long line rig. I can even dob in the deepest water down the middle to my right if, if, uh, if I feel that's where they've sat today. Gotta be a fish there. Probably a foot away from those trailing branches. Bit of cover, bit of warmth from all the decaying leaves perhaps. Now I think to, to frame today you're going to want, my guess is £35 plus to make the top five and maybe 50 to 60 pound to win could be just eight fish potentially on some of the lakes even the f1s are like three to four pound on some of the lakes so uh Straight to the top of that when I upped him. Come on, stay on. Stay on for Johnny. Load of elastic out, but that's not a bad thing. As long as it's not too snaggy. Because it's so clear, these fish pull a bit as well. <laughs> a little thin leather head of the leather middle of the top lip perfect don't, don't shake and break that's a good sign isn't it nice little mirror very thin I'm going to give him three pounds we're off. On the dog. Did you did. Go straight back in there then. Same place. Ben's got a big carper over there. Just fed a few more maggots short before I shipped out. Every now and again I might just catty, catty a few as well. I'm trying to focus on what's going on out here though. I won't be fishing that short line for a, at least an hour or two. But I might have an early look just to see what's there. If it is full of roach or not. 
so that'll dictate how heavy I need to carry on feeding, I think. Big carp has got on there. I think the 10 to 12 stick's going to go on next trip. So no bites there just yet. I'm just going to keep catty in. Carp throw there. More accurate and easy all round to. Still playing that fish. Yeah, ten pound. There's a load, a load of line in the tree, and uh, tr don't know how I didn't break my top kit. Trying to pull for a break. Absolute shocking. So I'm going to swap this rig over and put a new hook length on. But God knows how I even got the rig back in one piece, other than the hook. Bloody line in the tree. How are people cast into trees like that? Things I can't see the line until I uh, move my float over it. <sighs> that fish is eight or nine pound, Ben said. I've just swapped a 10 to 12 slick now. Dropping it back where I had that little mirror. Ben's definitely getting some signs. He's been striking a couple of times. I think the 17 metre section will be going on soon, or my parallel extension. There's no pole limit at this venue, but uh, I kind of wish there was. <laughs> it's daydreaming then, and the float were under. That's a big fish, though. He's not doing much. I'm glad I put the 10 to 12 on. My only worry is, we walked around the lakes this morning and the amount of sunken branches everywhere that you can see in the clear water. All the willows and that have blown in. What was I thinking, starting on 8 to 10 on this lake? <laughs> Will not come in. and as big as Ben's right in the nose no wonder he was a, a bit angry oh, just check the hook that's all fine <laughs> and another one wallowed when I hooked it I'm not sure it's as big might be an F1 there Fully scale mirror. A tricky one, isn't he? Mm, middle of the bottom bit, that one. Ben's playing his fourth, I think, up, up his margin. I've got three. I think Phil's still just on one. But the last two were going up towards Phil, so up this narrow neck. Could be because I'm closer to the far bank, or it's that's where they want to be. I've had a little roach fall off as well in between the last two fish. Branches. Just knocked a branch off that tree. <laughs> Crashed in my peg, that's not ideal. A metre more to the left now. right up that channel. Can't do a lot, so I might as well leave that one for later. Yeah.
Go for this guy over here. Look at that. Spinner. What was we fishing there? I'm going to deliberately go the other way now. I don't want to push them all out in the pegger. Not yet. So I'm not going to plunder that. I know there's two or three up there. Let's just see if we can catch somewhere else first. I don't want to push them out and out of the peg. I'm catching two spots. And back between the two, it'd be awesome. I've got to be careful now, because that line's hanging down somewhere around there. Took it under that too. Trying not to catch the whatever line or whatever is there. Yeah. I've got my dolly extension on as well now, so I'm just a touch near it. Sometimes with this bread you just go bang bang bang, catch you know, catch first hour and then uh, they've gone. Or they've backed off. And then maybe last hour they might reappear in your peg. So at some point we're gonna be uh, feeding bait, I'm sure. Must be really, really good to uh, just do this all day. As you've seen, it's great way of catching big carp. I don't want to feed. Just drop a bit of bread in front of its mouth. I've got my 17 meter section on there. I'm going to the side of it. got to be fish swimming up and down, up and down between myself and Ben up that far bank. It can't just be to my left, it's got to be some to my right. It's just going to say that looks a bit roachy and it's shot under a lot more carp here. I'm enjoying this. However, we've been fishing for uh, an hour, an hour and a quarter, is that right? Twelve, or an hour and three quarters, should I say. Winter dobbing, great when you're on them. Just hitting those branches. Get those branches out of the way. Just hit that branch and spook. I said I'd him in the net then if it weren't for that bloody branch. It's just nice I've caught to the left and right of that tree anyway. Or hooked. <laughs> Got him in yet, have I? Ben's emptying it there. I'm catching well, but Ben's catching even better, I think. Just drops it perfectly into a little hole. It looks mint there. It's got to go under. It's got to. If I was a carp, I would be sat in that hole. I couldn't have flicked it in there better if I tried. And I've just gone up to an 014 up length as well. Purely because we were only catching carp. So let's not mess around. We've already got five in the net. Five for 25 to 35 pounds. Now, I'm not the strongest of anglers, but I, I managed to fish my MTX4 with the parallel extension on. Um, so I can fish this at 17 and a half. On a day like this with no wind, quite comfortable actually. I've got friends that put another barrel on and fish like 19, 20 metres or more, but that's too much for me. Well, even if I don't get another bite now, I've had a lovely day already. Five beautiful fish. I think Ben's got six or seven. I mean, if you think my target is sort of 35 to 40 pounds, I've all, I'm already well on my way to that. Two or three more fish and that's my target. There's that one. Oh, stunning fishing here. That was up to the left. Yeah. 
that's on the heavier hook length as well. So just had an F1 up this side. Going back up there again. Seems to be some fish up there. Maybe a little wobble. Seems to be where the bulk of the fish are today. Body scale mirror. Probably one, maybe two fish behind Ben, but he's he's not had one the last half hour. Stunning fish. Well, I've just swapped to my uh, identical rig, just with a much shorter line, so I can tuck it in the branches a little bit more. This means I can tuck it into those nooks and crannies a little bit easier now. Might be able to catch Ben up with this fish. Get him in. Pulled him too hard, perhaps. I'm absolutely gutted I pulled out of that fish. My hook just went. So I've changed my hook. Dropped it straight back in the same hole. Back in. Why don't they all come in like that? Back in the lion's den behind that tree. Oh, mink. There's a mink. Just gone past my throat. Mink there, Ben. A mink coming your way. Great big wallowing fish. Really wallower. I'm caught up in the branches for a little bit. I'm just seeing him come up to the top. Lovely looking fish. Let's see if we can come near. Let's see if we can get him in quick. Absolute wallow of this. Lo lovely, lovely, fully scaled mirror again. I wonder when these went in. Well, I've caught carp in numerous areas now, within about sort of eight metres of that far bank left and right but I'm right I've tucked it right at the back now past those trailing branches I'm actually surprised how many carp are there I thought I might have had a few more F1s realistically I was after three or four carp a couple of F1s and then get me head down on maggots and pellets but there's clearly a few fish about it's gonna be chillier though I'm nice and warm playing these fish a few more ropes this way. I've had a carp this way, but I've also had two, two or three ropes. Oh, that mink's just gone past me float. Oh, he's gone in. Gone in for a swim. Now magpies are going at mental in the tree opposite. Not sure why. Now, I've not had a fish since that mink's been up and down. I'm sure it won't have scared the carp. But, uh Definitely not had one since it, it jumped in exactly where I'd had my last fish and uh, swam off under the water. I don't know where he's gone, but he's. Uh, I've not had a fish since. I'm sure it's not that. That's. Uh, we just got to find where they've gone. What are we on about eight now? Definitely scarfed for a bit. These fish. Ben's not had anything for a while either. I might have caught him up now and overtook him just a touch. We'll see. That's our biggest fish are really, isn't it? Definitely got more fish now, I think. Blondie F1. Not had a bite for ages and Ben stopped catching as well. So, uh, I'll have to do something else in a sec. I 
just had my first cart for ages five or six pound really really docile fish Ben's really stopped now he's feeding bait and trying to catch everywhere I'm not seeing Phil catch him but it doesn't mean he hasn't been but they've definitely backed off here I'm just going a bit funny had a little tiny ghost F1 or well a little tiny F1 there earlier and a roach on this spot so there's I've had a mixed bag off this line I can see someone else's line coming down there actually bloody hell so I'm fishing 17 and a half meters now not everyone's good to see not mine to be honest fish to where the fish are there's no pole limit here Let's try deeper again and it's a rocher chuck. Well I'm actually fishing 20 metres now. And you can see that. 20 metres down the peg just to see if they've gone down that neck. Doesn't look like it. Not my idea of fun. Okay, 20 metres now. Just to see. Search and search and search. I've gone as far as 20 meters just to see. Just a couple of roachy bites, that's all. I've gone back to the original spot, shortened the rig up again, tucked it right in, and they're attached to a unit. There's a load of trailing line that I have to uh, weave it in amongst. He's just wrapped around the gill plate for a little bit. Lovely fish, isn't they? How oh, easy to pop the up to, he wasn't going to come off. It's been the best spot there. Probably about a metre from the far bank. 20 inches to two foot deep. <laughs> Got to thread it in. <sighs> Try again. I have to shorten that line even more now, which is really awkward. But uh, luckily, I only lost my hook that, that drop. 16, 014, no missing. There's an 020 over there in the summer, I'm sure. It's not everyone's cup of tea to have in bread, but uh, when they're there, it's just brilliant. No need to feed. It's just about trying to find the hidey hole. Hungriest one of the lot. Come to Johnny. Come to me. I'd like to fish this lake again. Just keep going and going and going up that arm. Let's have a look at that short line, I think. In a double, I suppose. I never know exactly an hour to go. I just lost a great big one that's gone up the channel and didn't stop. <laughs> so, uh, who knows what that is? What that was? Have a look where I've been feeding that. Nice, there's some big, big F1s there. Well, that tea's gone cold.
could have done with that one. Never mind. We've only lost two, haven't we? Gotta be some fish here. Hour to go. The reason I chose this peg as well is if it was really hard, I can just get my head down on these. One more. Put some ground weight in there and leave it. Top up that line with a bit of ground bait and uh, there's more maggots. I can go another look long and we'll drop down and see. She's going to go. She's got some quality down there. fish on that long red line. Just rest it for a little bit. Go back on where I've got that bit of ground weight. Right? Only off one half a day. I think there's loads in here but there's I expected a few more in there. The field's packing up. Ben's just caught silvers the last two hours I think. as well. I'm just scoop them in tight.
Bonus. Oh, he's full of maggots. Nice to just caught those, wouldn't it? All day. Oh, it's another blondie. <laughs> enjoyed that. A few silvers there at the end. It wasn't solid but they were chunky fish. It must have 50 pound. Hopefully enough to frame. That's the way it's safe. Ain't got a lot to pack away anyway. There we are. Two and a bit slices of bread is all I've used. Eight mil matrix punch and uh, simple as that. Why what's winning? What do you reckon you've got? 50 pound. No one else caught? 34 pounds for you. Huh? 34 pounds for you. Well done. Cheers, thank you. Cheers, nice day. Oh, is that 68? 68.5. Cheers. 